everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Royal Rumble 2019 full show review and results. As you guys know how these videos work, I'm going to run through the entire card, letting you guys know exactly what happened on the show, how the matches went, what I thought of the matches, all of the results, and everything in between. The Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the entire WWE calendar year, and I feel like, you know, we always start things off with a freaking bang, guys. So we're on the road to WrestleMania now. Let's get into this show. So to start off the kickoff show, guys, we had a weird match. We had had Scott Dawson teaming up with Ray Zar of the Authors of Pain to team up to take on Chad Gable and Bobby Roode for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Why the hell would you even schedule that match if they don't have their tag team partners? What kind of sense does that make? That was absolutely nonsense. But anyways, Gable and Roode do retain. I thought that was really stupid. That's just WWE's way of trying to fit everybody on the freaking card like they always do. But anyways, getting into the United States Championship match, we have Rusev defending his United States Championship versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I didn't catch anything but like the last five minutes of this matchup, but it seemed like it was pretty decent. Again, I don't know all the details of the match. I need to go back and check it out, but uh, I do know, however, I did catch the last five minutes, Kinshasa to the back of Rusev Day's skull, and we got Knock America getting back his United States Championship. So Knock America is alive and well again. He wins his second United States Championship, I do believe, and I don't really know what they're going to do here. I don't like that they flip-flop the title back and forth, but, you know, I love Rusev and I like Shinsuke. I, I really didn't know which way. I thought that Rusev was for sure going to win because he just won the title, but I guess they're going to play title flip-flop for a little bit. But uh, that's all I have to say about this match. Shinsuke Nakamura is your new United States Champion. Next up, guys, we had the Fatal 4-Way Cruiserweight Championship match between Buddy Murphy, Kalisto, Hideo Itami, and Akira Tozawa. I wish we had Buddy Murphy and uh, we have Hideo Itami's, but my stupid idiot moron self lost it somehow. It's probably somewhere in a freaking bin or that. I, I don't know. But anyways, getting into this match, guys, we all knew that it was going to be an epic clash of four guys that could go, and uh, it didn't disappoint. I mean, honestly, I wish it could have been given maybe five, ten more minutes. However, I thought it did the job. You know, it sucks that they were on the pre-show to begin with. I don't agree with any championship being on the pre-show. I think that the pre-show should be like an hour long of just pre-show in the match. Why do we have to have any matches? If anything, give some light to like NXT guys or something or, or something. I just think that like maybe Mandy Rose and Naomi could have been on the pre-show or something like that to fill up you know, with non-title feuds, I think the titles get disrespected when they're put on the pre-show. But anyways, this matchup was great. I love the interactments between everybody. We had some really cool spots. Kalisto launching Akira Tozawa off the apron into Buddy Murphy. At one point, uh, I think Kalisto had, was on the shoulders of Buddy Murphy. Akira Tozawa dove through Hideo with Tommy's legs, hit Kalisto, and then sent... Uh, Buddy Murphy like into a Hurricane Rana and his head planted off of the barricade. Some really good stuff in this match, man. Great back and forth. I mean, the neat, there at the end, the last like two and a half, three minutes were epic, man. All four men in the ring just trading shots, giving knees from Buddy Murphy, people ducking and using other people to throw them into each other. It was a great little segment there at the end. Of course, uh, Buddy Murphy does retain the Cruiserweight Championship with Murphy's Law at the end on Hideo with Tommy. Great match. The right decision was made. Buddy Murphy shouldn't have dropped the title. And uh, he didn't, and I think that was the right decision. He's on fire right now, and I think that him keeping the title is, is perfectly okay. I would like to see him on a main roster, Raw or SmackDown Live, like Mustafa Ali. But uh, this works for now, and I'm proud that Buddy Murphy did retain his championship. So to open up the main show, guys, we had the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between my favorite, Becky Lynch, and my second favorite, Asuka, in a great matchup. I love this matchup a lot. You know, you knew what you were going to get out of both. You know, Becky, one of the most over-talented in all of wrestling all over the world right now. Asuka is always a beast, and they beat the hell out of each other in this match. I love the story they told. They were using each other's finishers. Um, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. You know, are they going to let Becky get the title back? Are they going to have her lose here? I did not, in fact, like that she tapped out to the Asuka lock. I do like that it makes Asuka look very strong, but um, and I, I'm okay with Becky Lynch losing this matchup because I thought that, you know, later on we would see her in the Women's Royal Rumble, but I don't know. I think it would have been super badass to have her pass out. Not actually tap out, but you know, it would go with her man character and her beast of a character, her savageness, if she were to pass out and just they had to call the match because she passed out. I think that would have been a much better story there. But she does tap out. Asuka does win. Great matchup. Great opener. Really set the mood for the night and I enjoyed the crap out of this. But Asuka does retain her SmackDown Live Women's Championship and will we see Becky Lynch later on in the night? Next up guys, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between The Bar taking on Shane McMahon and The Miz. Not a big fan of The Miz teaming up with Shane McMahon. You know, the babyface thing and everything is just sort of weird to me. I think it's all just leading to them in a match at WrestleMania. But anyways, getting into this match, it was better than I thought it would be. I loved 
the the beginning of this matchup was very intense. You know, a lot of guy, like every single guy in the match was bringing it. Like from from Sheamus, Cesaro, Shane McMahon, they were all beating the hell out of each other. I thought like. Damn, man, this is pretty dick. I'm impressive. I'm enjoying this. And uh, they, they continued that throughout. There were some cool moves in there. The finish came when uh, Sheamus was going for the brogue kick on The Miz while Cesaro held him. Miz moved out of the way. He brogue kicked Cesaro in the face. Miz hits the skull-crushing finale onto Sheamus. Shane McMahon climbs the top rope and hits a shooting star press on Cesaro for the win. And we all knew it, but it came to pass. The new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions are Shane McMahon and The Miz, guys. What a turn of events. I mean, we all kind of knew it. Let's be real. We all saw this going down. Um, they they sort of just got the rocket strapped to them, and then they're going to get pushed now. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a bad match at all. I still am not a fan of the tag team, but, you know, it is what it is. They did win. It wasn't a terrible matchup. I, I would say it was, you know, a, a little bit better than average maybe, or maybe I just like the intensity that both, both teams brought. But I like the purple gear. The purple and orange Phoenix Suns-inspired gear that the bar were rocking was pretty cool, and, yeah. The new team of Shane and Miz win the SmackDown Live Tag Titles. Next up, guys, we had the Raw Women's Championship. So both Women's Championships getting knocked out within the first part of the show. We had the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, taking on Sasha Banks. And I knew going in, just like the SmackDown side of things, that this matchup was going to be solid. You know, Sasha Banks, I knew that she wasn't going to win coming into this matchup. I knew, though, that she would use this as an opportunity to make herself look good and, you know, have a great match with Ronda. And uh, they impressed again. I thought that they delivered well. I I don't know if it was better than Becky and Asuka, but I did enjoy this matchup. Both women were beating the shit out of each other again. I don't know what it is about Ronda Rousey, but I love her her uh, her ability in the ring to reverse and stuff. I guess it's her, you know, jujitsu and wrestling background in the UFC that just really ties in well with wrestling and the way that she can maneuver in the ring and reverse and everything and the way her opponents do the same. Even with Nia Jack, she was able to do this. And I just noticed that throughout her matches that she always kills it. And um, I'm enjoying her work every single time she gets in the ring. But Ronda Rousey does win the matchup over Sasha Banks with the Piper's Pit. And I enjoyed this matchup, but Ronda Rousey does retain. I thought the women delivered just like SmackDown side of things. After the matchup, Sasha Banks did, you know, get in Ronda's face and they sort of shook hands and agreed on something. And then Sasha would walk off and then she came back to Ronda and did like the four, threw up the four there. I don't know what exactly this is supposed to be. Like maybe we're planting seeds for the four horsewomen or we're just planting more seeds for a few down the line. I don't know. I guess it was just sort of Sasha being like, I'm still here, bitch. Don't forget about me. But anyways, solid matchup, and we're moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the women's side of the Royal Rumble, so buckle it on up, because here we go. So number one entry was Lacey Evans, and number two was Natalia. So Natalia is entry number two. They would obviously do battle for a little bit. Out comes entry number three, Mandy Rose. thought it was weird. Mandy Rose came out, and there was a missed springboard moonsault by Lacey Evans that we didn't get to see. Natalia applies the double sharpshooter to Rose and Evans. Number four comes out. It is Liv Morgan. She is elim and eliminated immediately by Natalia. So Liv Morgan not getting very much offense in at all. She just gets destroyed. Entry number five would be Mickey James. She botched a little bit trying to eliminate Mandy Rose, but nothing special happened here. Entry at number six would be Ember Moon. Comes in, cleans house, looks really, really strong in her performance in the Royal Rumble. Number seven would be Billy Kay. She would be over obnoxious as always. Chills outside the ring. At the end of the ramp, says she's waiting for Peyton Royce. You could literally hear her yelling all over the place, running around the arena, just yelling about Peyton Royce and waiting and waiting and stuff. The number eight entrant was Nikki Cross. She takes out Billy Kay on the ramp, climbs the top rope, and takes out everyone in the ring. Cleaning house. Kind of awkward at moments, to be honest. She sort of had like a weird thing about her. I know that's her gimmick to be crazy, but I don't know. That's just me. She was a little bit awkward at times. Number nine would be Peyton Royce. She tries to help Billy Kay with Nikki Cross. She looked super weak at times. I didn't like the way she looked. But um, anyways, number 10 was Tamina. She comes out, Samoan drops for Peyton Royce, Ember Moon, Billy Kay, and Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross then shoves her through the middle rope, which was kind of weird in my opinion. She would then come in and eliminate Mickey James. So Tamina does eliminate Mickey James. And this came right as number 11, Zia Lee comes out. So Zia Lee comes in, literally kicking everybody's ass. She was throwing kicks everywhere. Looked really, really good. I was very impressed with her. Number 12 would be Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan tries to eliminate Ember Moon, and she literally hangs on by her freaking toes. Very sick save by Ember Moon at this point. Nikki Cross would then be eliminated by the Iconics. Dual elimination right there. They take her out. Number 13 would be the Queen Charlotte Flair. Oh my god. 
side. So number 13 was Charlotte Flair. She comes in, spears Lacey Evans, clearing house with moves. Then Lacey Evans would retaliate and eliminate both the Iconics at once, looking very strong. I was kind of impressed with Lacey Evans at times. She showed off some great athleticism during the match. Zia Lee would then get eliminated by Charlotte. Number 14 would be Kyrie Sane. After Kyrie Sane comes in, Tamina gets eliminated by Charlotte. Kyrie Sane looked like freaking AJ Styles coming off the top rope with a massive, phenomenal forearm. I don't even know who she hit, but she took out somebody. Kyrie Sane and Charlotte in a big knife edge chop fight in the middle of the ring. That was pretty entertaining. Sane delivers her signature elbow to Sarah Logan, and her and Natalia eliminate her. Number 15 would be Maria Kanellis. Um, I thought that her and Mike Bennett didn't re-sign with, you know, the company, but apparently those were just rumors. She comes in, has a few moves there. Huge spear to Maria by Charlotte. Number 16 would be Naomi. Naomi finally shows up in the Rumble. Goes right at Mandy Rose, of course, kicking off their feud. High kicks her off the apron. Mandy tries to powerbomb Naomi, but Naomi uh, saves herself with a sweet handstand to stay in. Walks to the barricade, save herself. Jumps from the barricade to the steel steps, and then Mandy Rose pushes her off and eliminates her. So all of that worked for absolutely absolutely nothing as Naomi gets eliminated. Charlotte would eventually go on to eliminate Lacey Evans. Number 17 would be Candice LeRae. Number 18 would be Alicia Fox. Marie and her had this weird moment in the middle of the ring with Fox's hat. Really weird segment. It's like a bunch of people around them are fighting and stuff. They're just having this screen fight and yelling and a temper tantrum in the middle of the ring over a stupid hat. Number 19 would be Casey Catanzaro, winner of American Ninja Warrior and Ricochet's current girlfriend. She ran through the ring showing off her athleticism. Number 20 would be Zelina Vega. She was dressed as Vega from Street Fighter, which I thought was very, very sick. I enjoyed that a lot. She would have a face-off with Candice LeRae in the middle of the ring from their feud in NXT. Number 21 would be Ruby Riot. Riot Squad would then drag Charlotte out of the ring. They drag Alicia, Alicia Fox out of the ring and then immediately eliminate Alicia Fox after this. Zelina Vega hides under the ring and peeks out with an evil smile. I thought that was kind of funny. Candice LeRae would then be eliminated by Ruby Riot. Number 22 is Dana Brooke. Dana with some offense. She gets drug out of the ring by the Riot Squad like others. Then Ruby Riot would brutally eliminate Kyrie Sane. Number 23 is Io Shirai. She comes in, double drop kicks the absolute dog shit out of the Riot Squad on her way to the ring. Moonsault from the outside onto the Riot Squad, continuing to look impressive. Vega continuing to hide under the ring. Number 24 will be Rhea Ripley. Very strong performance in this Rumble. Cleaning house, you know, just destroying a bunch of people. Dana Brooke goes to eliminate Casey Catanzaro, but nope, she's American Ninja Warrior, so she has to keep her feet up. Hand walks to the turnbuckle post, gets back in the ring, gets eliminated by Rhea Ripley immediately. Sonya Deville is number 25, and she delivers a six spear. I'm going to add right here, as Dana Brooke gets eliminated by Rhea Ripley, I wanted to say that Dana Brooke, this is the best she's ever looked in her entire career. I was very impressed by Dana Brooke. Um, you know, usually usually she doesn't do much of anything, but I thought, you know, her time off away from the ring, I think that she has definitely gotten better. Then it goes back to Selena Vega as she's hiding under the ring. Freaking Hornswoggle shows up. Hornswoggle appears under the ring with Vega, chases her around the ring, into the ring, Vega gets picked up and eliminated by Rhea Ripley, and Hornswoggle would then chase her up the ramp, and uh, yeah, just chases her out of the arena and ends up getting Zelina Vega eliminated. The number 26 entrant in the Royal Rumble would be Alexa Bliss, making her in-ring return since September, I do believe. I wish they wouldn't have announced her before the Rumble. I thought that it would have been a good pop, you know, to see Alexa Bliss return, but oh well, they did ruin that. But she makes her appearance. She eliminates Sonya Deville. Number 27 would be Bailey. Everybody wants, hey, everybody wants Bailey. She comes in, cleans house, eliminates Ruby Riot and Rhea Ripley. Very big elimination. Rhea Ripley looked very, very strong in this Royal Rumble match. Number 28 would be Lana. She comes in with a hurt ankle. Can't walk around. Needs the referees, obviously. She can't even, like, literally, she's limping, looking terrible. Just cannot walk, so a bunch of officials come out. Number 29 would be everyone's favorite, my least favorite ever, Nia Jax. Nia Jax is your 29th entrant. She comes out. I think a lot of people forgot about her. I sort of did until this moment when I kind of realized it. I was like, who is left? Who's not here? Nia Jax pops in my head. She beats the hell out of Lana. You know, more refs and officials show up. She kicks Io Shirai to death and eliminates her after going for a moonsault. Catches her midair, throws her out. She then goes on to eliminate Natalia. So elimin uh, Natalia, the number two entrant, finally ends her Iron Woman effort, and she is gone. Number 30 would be Carmella. She's rocking her Phoenix Suns-inspired attire. And then the impossible happens, Brad. Like everyone predicted, Becky Lynch, my girl, after losing to Asuka earlier in the night, she would come out. And I didn't like the way she came out. She sort of just came out with no entrance music. I think it would have been sick for her music to hit before she came out and talked to Fit Finley to get into this matchup. I thought it would be a lot better, you know, to hear that pop. But no music. She comes out. 
She inserts herself into the Rumble match for Lana, and we are freaking going. She has a stare down with Nia Jax, kicking some ass. Ember Moon would then get eliminated by Alexa Bliss. So, so Ember Moon is eliminated by Alexa Bliss. Then Bailey comes in and eliminates Alexa Bliss herself right after. Carmella would then be dumped out by Charlotte. Bailey almost eliminates Charlotte, and then Bailey gets eliminated by Nia Jax. So we're down to our final three, Charlotte, Nia Jax, and Becky Lynch. Becky slides onto the top rope and pulls Nia Jax's foot off, eliminating her. So we're down to the final two. Everyone knew this would happen. Becky Lynch taking on Charlotte Flair, head-to-head. -head. You know, uh, Nia hurts Becky's knee after the uh, after she gets eliminated. She, she takes after Becky's knee hurts her. So Becky's selling the injury the whole time. You know, she's looking weak and whatever. But, but you know, things keep happening. They, they go back and forth, yada, yada, yada. And then, bam, Charlotte Flair is eliminated. Eliminated and Becky Lynch wins and all is right in the world. Huge pop by the crowd. Great stuff in this. I love this so much. You know, we all pretty much knew it was going to happen, but that's sometimes what's best for business. I love this decision. To be honest, though, I didn't li like most of the Rumble itself was kind of boring. You know, there were some cool spots here and there from different talent. I thought the NXT talent looked great. I thought that, you know, certain performances were great and stuff like that, but uh, overall I thought that maybe the last 10-15 minutes was definitely the best, and uh, throughout it wasn't the greatest Royal Rumble, but I am very happy with Becky Lynch winning, we all called this, now we're going to see her go on to fight Ronda, I don't know if Charlotte's going to be involved or not, I am just ready to see this Ronda-Becky Lynch storyline unfold as we approach WrestleMania, going to be some epic stuff, but Becky Lynch does win the Women's Royal Rumble, very excited for my girl, and uh, yeah, Becky Lynch. Next up guys, we had the WWE Championship match between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. AJ Styles coming out in some sick AF lime green and black gear, the opposite of his black and lime green gear that he's been wearing on SmackDown. But anyways, guys, this match to me just fell flat. I don't know what it was. It's just like, I don't know. I wasn't hyped for the match going into it. I don't know why. But I don't know. It just did not live up to expectations. It it, it just was boring, man. I, I did not enjoy this at all. I know the crowd was super dead from the Women's Royal Rumble, but I wasn't into this match. There were some cool little spots throw, like thrown in throughout, but overall, just not a, a match I was a fan of. It was very odd and weird, especially about four-fifths through the match. What in the hell is this, Brad? Eric Rowan shows up, and he's not even in Bludgeon Brothers gear. He's been injured for, for months and for weeks now, but Bludgeon Brother Eric Rowan shows up. I don't think he's part of the Bludgeon Brothers anymore. I don't know what they're doing, but he just comes out in street gear, man. I don't know what this was. I, I didn't. He came out to no music. He came out to nothing, and he comes out, and he's sitting there for like three minutes just staring around. He's got a black t-shirt and some flannel on, just chilling. Then all of a sudden... Brian goes for an enziguri on AJ, he ducks, hits Mike Kyoto, the referee, in the face, drops Kyoto, and then he hits Daniel Bryan with a Styles Clash, then Rowan gets in the ring, does like a choke slam thing, uh, it takes Kyoto forever to, to get over there to, you know, to pin AJ. And it's one, two, three, that's it. This match fell completely flat. I wasn't a fan of it all, at all. I do like the storyline, but I didn't like the timing of it. The timing was all off right here. Eric Rowan showing up randomly. He should have showed up. He should have ran down to the ring after the, the referee went down. Him coming out beforehand just made it look totally planned and, and, and scripted, which obviously it is. I'm just saying that that totally uh, ruined the illusion that uh, that the referee bump was accidental. It just looked odd and it was weird. And then it took forever for them to actually pin AJ. I don't know, weird stuff. But Daniel Bryan retains, and I guess we're gonna find out about you know this Wyatt or or Bludgeon Brother or whatever the crap's going on with the Bludgeon Brothers or Harper and Rowan and Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles and stuff. But very odd match. D wasn't a fan of it. Uh, sick AJ gear though. Next up, guys, we had the Universal Championship match between my boy Finn Balor taking on the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar, and we already know what happened, guys. He he freaking lost. Finn Balor did lose. And I had so much hope there for a second. I honestly feel like this match could have went 5-10 more minutes at least. They had me on the edge of my seat. Um, I really liked the injury they tried to sell with Brock's, uh, you know, his groin or, you know, like his lower stomach. I thought that was excellent, especially with the coup de gras. I thought, you know, the coup de gras could do him in because he was so hurt he couldn't even lift Finn Balor at one point in the matchup. But he would uh, he would kick out at two and put Finn immediately in the Kimura lock, which is, you know, you get Brock Lesnar puts you in a submission hold. I mean, you're pretty much done. But I was super disappointed with the outcome, man. I thought that maybe Finn could have done it. I thought that that would have been excellent to, you know, pitch it this way. 
But uh, I had hopes at this point that, you know, the Demon would come out in the Royal Rumble and win the Rumble. I mean, they did it with the women, with Becky. I know that kind of um, craps on the fact that they, like, if they did it with the men, too, they, they would probably crap on it a little bit. But I would be totally fine with it. That's sort of something that ran through my head as I was watching this. But Finn Balor does lose. You know, it was, it was solid for what it was. I wish it would have went five to ten more minutes. But Brock Lesnar does retain the Universal Championship, man. Super disappointed, but you know what? I was having high hopes for the Rumble, and hopefully that, you know, it wouldn't disappoint me. So, my boy does come up short here, but I was cheering my ass off, and hopefully, you know, he can go somewhere with this. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Men's Royal Rumble. 30 men, all for an opportunity at WrestleMania for a championship of their choosing. Let's get straight into it. Entrant number one was Elias. I thought this made a lot of sense. You know, uh, it's a perfect spot for his gimmick. You know, opens up with a little concert. Number two would be Jeff Jarrett. And to be honest with you, I wasn't a big fan of this. Even though Jeff Jarrett looked like he could freaking still go, man. He was giving the work to Elias. And uh, I don't know. I didn't like that Jeff Jarrett was number two. I don't know. It was just kind of weird to me. We weren't in Memphis, Tennessee. To see. We weren't anywhere that, you know, I don't, I don't know. But anyways, number three was Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, another thing that I really didn't agree with, why is Shinsuke Nakamura, who had a United States Championship match that he won earlier on the pre-show, is the number three entry. I mean, I like Shinsuke, but why is he having another match? I don't like when you have a match on the card and then you enter yourself into the Rumble. With Becky's case, it's a little different. It fits her character, but for Nakamura... It really didn't make sense. He won the U.S. title. Why is he in this thing? But anyways, in comes number four, and it is Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle comes in there, starts suplexing everybody. Suplex, suplex, suplex. Time would move on, and we would end up with number five, and that would be the first member of the New Day to make their entrance, and it would be Big E. Big E is here at the Rumble, causing havoc as the first member of the New Day to compete. He would lay out everybody with some suplexes. He would take an angle slam from Kurt Angle, and then Shinsuke Nakamura would come in and eliminate Kurt Angle. At number six, we would have our first NXT talent, and it would be Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Gargano makes his freaking entrance. Uh, I love the way he came in there, you know, tearing it up, but Big E did botch his little tornado DDT. Number six. Seven would be the modern day Maharaja, which, you know, is, is all good because immediately after he comes in, he gets destroyed by Johnny Gargano. So Jinder Mahal, not very much time in the Rumble match at all. He gets destroyed. Number eight would be a really good entry. We have Samoan Joseph making his presence known at the Royal Rumble at number eight. Comes in there, you know, Johnny Gargano jumped off the top rope and Joe just walked away. I thought that was hilarious. He was trying to get a move up on Joe. Joe said, F you, and just walks off and Johnny crash lands into the canvas. Samoa Joe would then take it upon himself to eliminate Big E, so one member of New Day already gone from the Rumble. Number nine would be none other than Kurt Hawkins. Yes, Kurt Hawkins is in the Royal Rumble. He comes down to the ring, and he just sort of chills on the outside. He gets in the ring. He gets out of the ring. He slaps Samoa Joe on the back, gets back out of the ring, you know, sort of running away, and then Kurt Hawkins would proceed to get underneath the ring itself and hide like Zelina Vega earlier in the night. Number ten, in comes Seth freaking Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins makes his entrance at the Royal Rumble, wearing a sick-ass, like, Chicago Bears and inspired gear. It had navy, orange, and white. Very sick. I'm, I'm probably going to get started on the custom very, very soon, so you guys can look out for that. He comes in and does a really creative uh, elimination on Elias. Elias is like grabbing onto the, the turnbuckle post, and he like slaps his hands and eliminates Elias. Number 11 is Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil stops at the apron, chases Hawkins under the ring, then they both get eliminated. Hawkins eliminates Titus, and then Samoa Joe takes out Kurt Hawkins of the Royal Rumble. Number 12, we would get our second New Day member, and it would be Kofi Kingston. He makes his appearance known. Really love the gear that New Day was rocking right here. Number 13 would be Mustafa Ali coming out in the sick white, black, and gray gear. Really like Mustafa Ali's efforts. One of the Iron Men in this match. He laid a really sweet drop kick to knock America, and it knocked him straight out of the Royal Rumble and off the turnbuckle. Joe really nailed Ali at one point in the match, guys. He freaking suplexed the hell out of him into the corner, sick, nasty style. Number 14 would be Dean Mean Machine Ambrose. He goes right at Seth Rollins. He tries to eliminate Kofi Kingston, but Kofi with a sweet save as always. Hits Gargano with the Dirty Deeds and eliminates Johnny Wrestling. So Johnny Wrestling would be eliminated. Number 15 would be my man No Way Jose coming down to the Royal Rumble. I think he got the uh, the record for the fastest Royal Rumble elimination ever because as soon as he got in the ring, he got destroyed. So I don't know if he broke Santino's record, but he was freaking close. 
Number 16 would be an early favorite for the Royal Rumble win, and it is Drew McIntyre. He came out there looking really strong. No Way Jose tries to dance with him on his way to the ring, but of course Drew destroys him and destroys his entire conga line. Number 17 would be Austin Creed, aka Xavier Woods. Drew tries to eliminate Kofi, but of course Xavier saves him, and then Drew McIntyre would go on to eliminate both men from the Rumble. Number 18 would be the UK champ, Pete Dunne, looking great, had some great moments. Moments. You know, he gave it to Joe, Drew, and Ali getting work from Pete Dunne. 19 will be everybody's favorite, Cian Almas or Andrade. Still getting used to that. Cian Almas sounds so much cooler. But he's rocking the yellow and black gear, looking really good. Number 20 would be Apollo. Apollo making his presence known here at the Royal Rumble. He had some new gear. He's rocking like some black, gold, and silver. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. He had some good interactions. 21 would be Alistair Black, guys. I was marking out at this moment. I thought this was freaking sweet, nasty farticles. Did not expect Alistair Black in this Rumble at all, but he came in. He came in kicking ass. I wish he would have came in and just black masked everybody. Just kick, kick, kick. Everybody just getting knocked out. He then would go on to black mask Dean Ambrose and Dean Ambrose would sell it really strong and he would just fly over the freaking ropes, man. Eliminating Dean Ambrose. 22 would be Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin comes into the Royal Rumble. One of my boys. At this point, man, the ring was full of great talent. I was like, holy crap, man. This is freaking amazing. You gotta include Mustafa Ali into this as well. Speaking of Mustafa Ali, he would then eliminate Samoa Joe, which I enjoyed. I thought this was great for Mustafa Ali. It was also great for storytelling, and I enjoyed this. 23 would be Trash Corbin, my least favorite of all time, and he would eliminate Apollo from the match. 24, the Charismatic Enigma comes into the Royal Rumble, whispering the wind to a group of people. Trash Corbin would then eliminate Aleister Black, which I thought was really stupid. Man, making Aleister Black job out to Trash Corbin. McIntyre would then hit Pete Dunne with a Claymore kick and eliminate Pete Dunne, so two great talents eliminated back to back. 25 will be the greatest mask of all time, and that is Rey Mysterio coming into the Rumble. Next up would be Bobby Trashley, the Intercontinental Champion. And then Bobby Trashley gets eliminated immediately by Seth freaking Rollins. Bobby Trashley would then pull Seth underneath the ropes and put him through the announce table and sort of write him off TV for a little bit. 27 was going to be the man that I least wanted to win this Royal Rumble match, and that would be the monster among men, Braun Strowman. He makes his way to the ring for the Rumble at number 27. And you know it's Braun Strowman, so he's got to come in there. He eliminates Trash. He eliminates Shelton Benjamin. At number 28, it is my boy Dolph Ziggler coming in. I did not expect him at all. I was actually very shocked. I had popped pretty hard for this because it was uh, sort of written on like an interview and everything that he was supposed to be away from TV. He was taking a little leave of absence from WWE and here he is in the Rumble and I was very shocked. Jeff Hardy would then be eliminated by Braun Strowman. And one thing that totally shocked me, guys, is Ziggler hits Drew McIntyre with a super kick and eliminates him. So, you know, I'm guessing they're going to be feuding on into Fastlane and the Elimination Chamber. At number 29, we had my boy Randy Orton. There was a crazy superplex in the corner, by the way. We had, it was Andrade, Braun, Mustafa Ali, and Mysterio. And it was the sickest thing I've ever seen. I thought it was a really sweet superplex. Number 30... This gets very interesting, guys, and this is where I about cut the damn TV off. I think this is the worst number 30 of all time. At number 30, we had R-Truth, guys, and I'm not talking about R-Truth being the terrible part of it. R-Truth comes out, and he's trying to hype up the crowd, and then out of freaking nowhere, Nia freaking Jax comes in, takes out R-Truth, and I was like, they are not doing this, man. There ain't no damn way they're about to have Nia freaking Jax come in this Men's Royal Rumble right now. And it was rumored that, like, you know, Becky Lynch would win the Men's Rumble. And I was like, there ain't no damn way you're about to bury your whole men's roster with Nia Jax right now. This is awful. Nia Jax enters the Men's Royal Rumble, and I was so pissed off, man. She eliminated Mustafa Ali, the one of the freaking Iron Men in this matchup. She goes on to destroy Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, Dolph Ziggler. Just all these kids are getting destroyed. I was literally livid, guys. You guys know how I feel about Nia Jax. I was super, like, just... WTF in right now. But then eventually she gets super kicked by Dolph Ziggler, RKO by Orton, 619 by Rey Mysterio, and finally Nia Jax is freaking eliminated by Rey Mysterio. Worst number 30 of all time. I absolutely hated that, and it was just trash as hell. Randy Orton would then eliminate Rey Mysterio, and then Randy would get eliminated. I can't remember who it was, if it was Braun or Stra I, don't, I think it was Andrade possibly. But anyways, guys, we're down to Ziggler, Strowman, and Andrade. And then, finally, Seth Rollins returns to the matchup. So here we are down to our final four. Andrade would get eliminated by Braun Strowman. And we're down to our final three, Ziggler, Strowman, and Seth. I was obviously like, there ain't no way my boy Dolph Ziggler is winning this thing. There's just no way. And, of course, 
Braun Strowman eliminates Dolph Ziggler, and we're down to Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman. We have some back and forth. Seth Rollins on the apron. I'm freaking panicking. I'm like, God, please, please, Jesus, please let my boy Seth Rollins win this Rumble, man. We cannot have Braun Strowman go on to Mania. God, please, God, please. And then, curb stop. Braun Strowman is eliminated, and Seth freaking Rollins is headed to WrestleMania. Thank freaking God. Even though Finn Balor should have won the Universal title, I'm fine with this. This is who I wanted. This is who I predicted. Three years straight, I have predicted the Royal Rumble winner. And Seth Rollins, the man, one of my boys, gets it done, and I freaking love it. I'm so happy for Seth. He should go on, dethrone Brock Lesnar, and we should just have everything right in the world. That completes your Royal Rumble 2019 show, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I honestly don't know what I think about the Men's Rumble. I loved all the different talent we got. Like, I loved all the surprise entrants, the NXT talent, the the, the main roster talent. The the things I didn't like was Jeff Jarrett. Nia Jax, that that was almost a deal breaker for me, guys. I didn't. I would much rather have our truth than Nia Jax in that hoe. But luckily, she did get RKO'd, which made my night. I loved that. Oh, my God, I popped so hard for that. But that concludes Royal Rumble 2019. I thought it was a pretty solid show overall. I mean, I really... The only match I didn't like was the AJ Styles-Daniel Bryan match, which is very absurd. I didn't like how short Brock and Finn was. But at the end of the night, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad show at all. I thought it was a solid show. I'm not going to tell you it was incredible, but it was definitely solid. I enjoyed it, and it was a solid way to start uh, the, the year of 2019. Hopefully, they treat Seth Rollins the way they should have treated Nakamura, and he goes on and just has an amazing 2019. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the Rumble. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, please leave a like and comment down below what you thought of the show. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.